Not too long ago, Saudi Arabia was a desolate wasteland filled with tribes who were fighting for survival. The area had extremely low economic activity, and aside from Mecca, they had nothing going for them. On March 3, 1938, however, all of this would change when the Americans found the world's largest petroleum reserves in Saudi Arabia. Over the next few decades, much of the profits from the area went to the Americans, while Saudi Arabia was left with measly dividends. But Saudi Arabia slowly saved up these dividends and started buying up these oil companies that were drilling across their country. And eventually, by 1980, the Saudi government would grow their stake to 100%, which made them the owners of the most profitable company in the world, Saudi Aramco. Saudi Aramco has since revolutionized the area into a modern desert oasis. But while their cities are more modern than even western cities, they still have one fatal bottleneck. 92% of their budget comes from oil. Now, most of us have been led to believe that Saudi Arabia has enough oil to run for several decades, if not over a century. But many experts disagree, because there's evidence that Saudi Arabia may have been lying about their oil reserves all along. So, how much time does Saudi Arabia actually have before they run out of oil? 50. To figure out how much time Saudi Arabia has left, we can approach the problem in two different ways which are the supply approach and the demand approach. For this video, we're mainly gonna focus on the supply. Saudi Arabia is estimated to have 260 billion barrels of oil left. And over the past 10 years, Saudi Arabia has on average pumped out roughly 10 million barrels of oil per day. This means that over an entire year, Saudi Arabia pumps out approximately 3.65 billion barrels of oil. Doing some simple math, we'd find out that if Saudi Arabia maintains their current output, they'd run out of oil in 71.2 years or sometime in the mid-2090s. This might sound like a long time away, but the thing to keep in mind is that it's already been 84 years since Saudi Arabia started pulling in oil revenue. This means that Saudi Arabia is already over halfway through their oil roller coaster. But things may be a lot worse than just this. You see, a lot of experts think that Saudi Arabia has been lying about their oil reserves. All of the oil reserve estimates that we've gotten for decades now is from Saudi Arabia themselves, and the data is rather sketchy. First of all, in 1989, Saudi Arabia's oil reserves just randomly skyrocketed from 170 billion to 260 billion. But all of Saudi's biggest oil fields were discovered between 1936 and 1970, and no comparable discoveries have been made in the last 50 years. So how did their reserves apparently jump by 90 billion barrels overnight? Something else to note is that the timing of this jump was also super sketchy. While Saudi Arabia took control of Aramco in 1980, it wasn't until 1988 that the Americans were fully pushed out and Saudi leadership was established. And somehow, just one year after this change in leadership, their oil reserves skyrocketed by 50%. Now, that's definitely quite suspicious. Also, Saudi Arabia has been claiming that their oil reserves haven't changed in 33 years. This doesn't seem all that likely given how much oil they've pumped out in the past 33 years. Going back to the Saudi oil output graph, we can see that Saudi Arabia has averaged about 8.5 million barrels of oil over the past three decades. This works out to a total output of 102 billion barrels of oil. Also, if we look more closely at the Saudi's reserve data, we'll see that they have not only been claiming that their oil reserves have stayed constant, but they've actually been claiming that they've been increasing. In 1990, there were 258 billion barrels of oil, but as of 2016, there were 266 billion barrels of oil. This means that Saudi Arabia was not only able to pump out 102 billion barrels of oil over the last 30 years, but they were also able to come out on top by 8 billion barrels. In other words, Saudi Arabia has been able to find 110 billion barrels of oil since the Americans left. And that's in addition to the initial 90 billion barrel jump. So apparently, Saudi Arabia has found a total of 200 billion barrels of oil since they took over. Keep in mind, this figure is 30 billion barrels more than what the Americans estimated Saudi Arabia had in total in the 1980s. Now, I know a lot of people aren't exactly fans of Americans. But one thing I think we can all agree about is that Americans are phenomenal at capitalistic exploitation. So the idea that the Americans exploited Saudi Arabia for 50 years and didn't even find half of their oil reserves aka 200 billion barrels 
seems pretty far-fetched to me, but I'll let you be the judge of that. It's not just the reserve data that's pointing to inconsistencies either. There have been some major leaks over the years that have pointed towards the Saudis lying. In 2011, for example, we saw a leak from WikiLeaks that claimed to cover insider info from a high-level Saudi oil executive. According to the executive, over the years, Saudi Arabia had been overstating their oil reserves by as much as 300 billion barrels. Also, something else to note is that Saudi Arabia has never been able to pump up production that much. If they truly found another 200 billion barrels, you would think that they have plenty of new oil fields to drill from and increase production. Yet, they have been unable to top what the Americans got them to. You see, 10 million barrels per day is nothing new. In fact, the Americans were able to reach this level with Saudi Arabia way back in 1980 when they reached 9.9 .9 million barrels per day. It's been 42 years since then, but the Saudis have barely been able to reach 10.7 million barrels per day. Also, it doesn't seem like the Saudis are holding back either. For example, even when Donald Trump threatened to withdraw military support, Saudi Arabia couldn't increase production to over 10.5 million barrels per day. Now, you could say that Saudi Arabia refused to respond to threats, but they weren't able to increase production even when they were the ones that were issuing the threat. For example, remember when oil prices crashed between 2014 and 2016? Oil prices crashed from $120 to just $42, and one of the main reasons for this was Saudi Arabia. You see, the US was making strides when it came to extracting oil from oil shales. This meant that the US would become less dependent on the Middle East for oil. So, Saudi Arabia and OPEC decided to launch a price war against shale oil extractors. The idea was to pump up oil production and crash oil prices to run these extractors out of business. This would have been the perfect time for Saudi Arabia to pump up production to 15 or even 20 million barrels per day. But they weren't even able to cross 11 million barrels. The same thing can be said about the price war with Russia at the beginning of the pandemic as well. Clearly, Saudi Arabia can't even surpass the ceiling that the Americans got them to, which just makes it even more likely that they've been lying about reserves. But all of this brings up the question, why lie? Wouldn't it be better for Saudi Arabia if everyone knew that oil reserves weren't as plentiful? Less supply equals higher prices, which means more profit for Saudi Arabia, right? Well, this would be true at the beginning, but it wouldn't last long. You see, even with Saudi Arabia's likely inflated figures, they don't actually hold the world's largest oil reserve. This title actually goes to Venezuela who holds 300 billion barrels. Now, Venezuela oil has never been that helpful to the world because the country has been plagued with corruption, hyperinflation, and who knows what else. But the second the world knows for sure that Saudi Arabia doesn't have as much as they said, they're gonna turn their entire focus onto the remaining countries. We'll see historic strides in Venezuela and Canada. Heck, we might even see the Western world make amends with Russia. At the same time, the push for renewable energy will also become stronger than ever before. And all of this will reduce the world's dependency on Saudi Arabia. And given that oil is the only thing that gives Saudi Arabia any sort of significance on the world economic stage, this would not be in Saudi Arabia's best interest. For them, it's best to keep the rest of the world as dependent as possible on their oil. And if that means lying about their oil reserves, then so be it. If Saudi Arabia has been lying about the reserves this entire time, how much time do we actually have until they run out? Well, if we assume that the last accurate piece of data we have is from 1988 when the Americans left, this means that Saudi Arabia was left with 170 billion barrels of oil. Realistically, it's possible that they've increased this amount by 10 to 20 percent over the past 34 years, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and call it 200 billion barrels. At 8.5 million barrels per day on average, Saudi Arabia would have used up 105 billion barrels since 1988. This would leave them with 95 billion barrels left today. If Saudi Arabia continues to average 8 to 10 million barrels per day, this would mean that they only have roughly 25 to 30 years left. If Saudi Arabia has been lying, then I think this is likely a pretty realistic estimate. Now, we could of course go full tinfoil hat mode and become doomsday theorizers. What if Saudi Arabia found no new oil after the Americans left? And what if 20% of the remaining 170 billion barrels was unusable? This would mean that Saudi Arabia only had 136 billion barrels of usable oil in 1988. Given that we've used approximately 105 billion over the past 34 years, this would leave them with just 31 billion barrels today. 
At this rate, they'd be out in less than 10 years. While that sounds scary, it's more than likely not true. While Saudi Arabia may be lying about having 70 to 100 years worth of oil left, it's likely that they at least have a few decades left. And this matches up with the kingdom's actions as well. If they truly had several decades worth of oil left, I don't think they'd be going all in on growing other sources of revenue. Over the past couple of years, Saudi Arabia has made insane strides when it comes to adopting Western standards. Women's rights and human rights in general have gotten significantly better, and they've even opened up the country to tourism for the first time. They've also been pouring billions of dollars into airports and tourist attractions, so it seems like they're pretty determined to turn the country into a tourist hub just like Dubai. There's also the whole Vision 2030 project led by Mohammed bin Salman, which aims to significantly reduce the country's dependence on oil. If such projects go well, I think it's pretty realistic for Saudi Arabia to become independent from oil by the time they run dry. So while they may be tricking the entire world regarding their reserves, they're not tricking themselves, and they're very much getting prepared for a future without oil. While we can argue that lying about their reserves is unethical and manipulative, from an objective perspective, they've actually played their cards really well. By overstating their reserves, they've been able to maintain their dominance within the oil industry. Their crude oil exports are literally twice as high as second place. This has allowed them to build up a war chest that's worth nearly half a trillion dollars. They also took Saudi Aramco public a few years ago at a $2 trillion valuation. So it looks like they're slowly wanting to cash out over there as well. In the meantime, they've also started to aggressively diversify their income streams. So it looks like Saudi Arabia is poised to do extremely well even after they run out of oil. As for the rest of us, we may not have as much oil left as we originally thought. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe this is exactly what we need to finally make the jump to renewable forms of energy and leave our gas guzzling days in the past. But that's just what I think. Do you think Saudi Arabia's oil reserves are sketch? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're excited for a renewable future. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.